and somehow I Come from them apartments where they heartless. Wrote my name on the wall on some art shit. Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh. I come from where the park is, where we park shit. Whole world know Vince, I'm an artist. Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, yeah. Ho. All the time, 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 all the time. All the time, all the time. What do you believe in? Die to have respect. I believe that the world got black neglect. Living broke, liquor stores where we cashing checks. Flipping dope, pimping hoes just to make ends meet. Vince Staples was born in July of 1993. His parents are from Compton, California, but Vince grew up in Long Beach, California. It's less than a half an hour away. According to Vince, his parents moved to get out of the way and refers to Long Beach as being the next step to getting out of the ghetto. He spent time at his grandparents' house in Compton when he was very young. Vince went to school in Compton until he got to high school. People are too focused on game banging in Long Beach. Dudes think that's some old stuff, but not out here. Long Beach, Compton, and this whole area, not necessarily Los Angeles, but the places that Los Angeles likes to leave out. That's what it is out here. Dudes either grow up gang banging, get old and start gang banging, or they have a regular job. It's not a place a lot of people leave. Vince primarily lived with his mom, grandparents, and aunt growing up. His mom worked a lot and his dad was always getting incarcerated. To learn more about Vince's dad and his childhood, I highly suggest that you go listen to his song, Nate, that appears on Shine Cold Chain 2. Vince's parents were involved in gang culture and this is something that Vince succumbed to himself joining the Crips. In an interview with The Guardian in 2015, Vince said, I started gangbanging because I wanted to kill people. I wanted to hurt people. There's no reason. It's a bloodthirst. The same reason people join the army because they want to kill. A lion doesn't make an excuse to kill anybody. He does it because he wants to. Most people join the army for employment though, and we like to think we're more considered than lions. Well, they're not the ones destroying the planet, we're not better, we're probably worse than freaking animals. As a freshman in high school, Vince was accused of stealing a phone at school. When his mom picked him up, the school showed her his file with Vince's picture on it that said active gang leader. Vince called this out because he was not a leader of anything, especially at this age, according to him. Even though he had multiple witnesses, including the kid whose phone it was, all claiming that Vince was innocent, but the school still targeted him. He was charged with multiple felonies, including aggravated assault, threatening a witness, and armed robbery. Eventually, both the school and police agreed to drop the charges if he left Mayfair High School in Lakewood, California. Sometime after this, Vince moved to Atlanta, Georgia for a while to stay at one of his sister's houses. This lasted around eight months. While out in Atlanta, Vince did not really have the desire to go to school anymore. Once he moved back to California from Atlanta, he stayed with his aunt and went to several schools. In an interview, Vince said that he went to six or seven different schools in two years. I wasn't going to class though. I was always late and when I wasn't late, I was getting in trouble for fighting or something. The first school I went to was Mayfair. 
I was going to play football and basketball at the time, but my mom moved further away from school, so I had to walk and I would be late. When I wasn't late, I would have to deal with the freaking Mexicans all alone and just a bunch of BS. Eventually, I stopped going to school because I did not feel like dealing with that. It became a headache. It went from getting used to knowing everybody at your school and having no problems like a real family environment to being around a bunch of people I had never met before. It was a hard transition to make. Vince was a smart kid who got straight A's when he went to school, but he liked to fight and get in trouble. He grew bored of school and dropped out in the 10th or 11th grade and never graduated. Even after not graduating high school, Vince was trying to finesse his way into college, which did not work out. Film school was something that he was interested in, but Vince getting involved with music was something that was not planned. In 2010, a friend of his took him to Odd Future Studio to meet Sid the Kid. Before this, he had rapped for fun, but never really thought about making it into a career. Sid, in an interview, said that Vince was the only person that wasn't in Odd Future that was working at the studio. At the time, certain people within Odd Future weren't all the way vibing with Vince because he was not a member, but Vince felt like he sounded way different from them and could do things by himself. Being affiliated with Odd Future massively helped out Vince during his early days. Earl Sweatshirt of Odd Future was someone that Vince befriended and became close with. In March of 2010, Earl Sweatshirt released his debut mixtape Earl. On this mixtape, Vince is featured on the controversial track Epar. Both Vince and Earl have matured since the making of the song and have denounced its subject matter. If you've ever heard the song before or flipped the title Epar backwards, then you would know why. But shortly after the release of the Earl mixtape, Earl Sweatshirt was sent to a boarding school in Samoa. This was because he was messing up at home and struggling with addiction. When Earl Sweatshirt went away, there was a lot of intrigue around his music. Vince Staples happened to be one of the few features on his debut mixtape. Because of this, people were interested in hearing more of Vince's music, but he did not have much out at the time. With not much to do after dropping out of school, Vince was inspired by his now DJ Westside Ty to not waste his opportunity and make a mixtape. In December of 2011, he released Shine Cold Chain Volume 1. My favorite song from this tape is probably Versace Rap. Tried to tell us everything will be all right. Knew what it was for, still I felt that it was wrong. Till I heard Chef call himself God in the song, and it all made sense. The name Shine Cold Chain was just Vince being funny by taking the names of the rapper Shine from Bad Boy Records and Roscoe P. Cold Chain from Star Trek Records and putting them together. The joke was that Vince was going to go to jail after releasing the mixtape. This was because Shine and Roscoe got arrested during their come up. In 2001, Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting and wounding two people during a dispute between Diddy and another man in a Times Square nightclub in 1999. In 2008, Roscoe P. Colchain was arrested in connection to a double murder. This is something that he would ultimately serve 14 years for. So this was the inspiration behind the name of the tape and obviously Vince did not end up getting locked up. The best way that people describe Shine Cold Chain Volume 1 is that it's raw. You can tell that there's potential there, but obviously this was his first project and he would only grow from here. In 2012, Vince appeared on Damo Genesis mixtape No Idols on the song Elimination Chamber. One of the greatest mixtapes that I've ever heard and that's by no exaggeration. If you haven't listened to this mixtape, then you should definitely go do that. Vince had a standout verse on Elimination Chamber, which helped his hype at the time. Scariest prom nights would carry a car, rides with Barry, that's Hallie, not Brent, shooting like Brent and his brother doing what daddy got did. Also in 2012, Vince dropped the mixtape Winter in Prague in October of that year. Previous to making this video, I had never heard or listened to this mixtape. I've since heard it and it's okay to me. Of course, off the first listen, I just thought it was alright and Vince was still developing. 
2013 to me is when Vince started to put things together and it all started with his verse on Earl Sweatshirt song, Hive. If this was 88, I would have signed a ruthless 9-4, would have had them walking down death row. Earl Sweatshirt came back to the United States from Samoa in 2012 and reconnected with Vince. Not that long after, the two would create one of their best collaborations together, being Hive. When Hive came out, the buzz around the song was crazy. I feel like Earl definitely did his thing, but Vince really elevated with his verse. I mean, two months before the song officially released, Earl took to Twitter to say that Vince had the best rap verse of the year and that he wrote it in 15 minutes. Back to 2013, and this is the year that Vince also released his mixtape Stolen Youth with Larry Fisherman, which is one of Mac Miller's monikers. Stuck In My Ways is a song that I remember bumping all the time when it first released. Vince Staples met Mac Miller through Earl Sweatshirt when he returned from Samoa. I introduced myself and he asked why I don't rap and I told him I don't get beats like that. He told me he had some beats and that I should come over to make some stuff. So we did and that was that. The project had been done for a minute but we were just trying to put it out around the tour. The tour that Vince is referring to is Mac Miller's The Space Migration Tour which occurred in 2013. On this tour, Vince really learned how to perform with Mac helping him out a lot. The two built a very strong friendship and he became one of Vince's closest friends. RIP to Mac Miller. In August of 2013, it was revealed that Vince Staples signed a deal with Def Jam Records. This came to light through the liner notes of Earl Sweatshirt's album Doris, which was released that month. Vince's signing was not publicly announced by Vince or Dev Jam. When questioned about why he signed with Dev Jam, Vince simply said because they had the bag. He also said that they had the right situation for him and his family. In interviews after Stolen Youth, Vince said that Shine Cold Chain Volume 2 would be his next project due to him not having a solo project since the first one. He wanted to have it out by the end of 2013, but the tape would not release until March of 2014. This was arguably Vince's best work till this point. Very cohesive project and one of the more popular songs from it that I mentioned earlier is Nate. As a kid, all I wanted was the killer man. Be like my daddy friends hopping out that minivan. In the summer of 2014, Vince was featured on Common Song Kingdom from his album Nobody Smiling. Vince once again had another great feature and how the song came about was through the producer No ID. Vince worked with No ID on his project Shine Cold Chain Volume 2 and while working together, Common told No ID that he liked Vince's music and he wanted to work with him. Common highly praised Vince and said that he was one of the best rappers out. Working with Common inspired Vince to take his music more seriously due to seeing how serious Common was with his. In August of 2014, Vince released the song Blue Suede from his upcoming project at the time, Hell Can Wait. I remember when this song came out and I heard it for the first time and I was going crazy. It got me really hyped for Hell Can Wait, which was released in October of 2014. Very good EP from top to bottom. Fire, Screen Door, and Hands Up are all dope songs from it. Hell Can Wait was one of the first projects that Vince felt like he had complete control over. He always had creative control, but now he had the access to find different things that he needed to make the music for the project. The story of Helkin Wait is set after Vince is getting out of middle school. He was anticipating high school coming and having to be grown up at a very young age. His mom used to always tell him that hell would not wait for him to get his stuff together, which inspired the name of the EP, Helkin Wait. This hard work for Vince paid off in 2015 when he was announced as a XXL freshman. For those who don't know, every year XXL picks several artists that they predict will be the future. Vince was in a class with people like Tink, Fetty Wap, Rory, Golink, 
OG Mako, Kid Kid, who was a super senior at the time, K Camp, and Dej Loaf. Many people refer to this as being one of the worst double XL freshman classes of all time. It aged like milk looking back on it in 2024. Fans were bummed that Vince did not make the list back in 2014, which to me would have been a way better fit. The 2014 class is regarded as one of the best double XL classes with Chance the Rapper, Kevin Gates, Troy Av, Lil Durk, Rich Homie Kwan, John Connor, Jaron Benton, Ty Dolla Sign, Isaiah Rashad, Lil Bibby, and August Alsina. Who he could have replaced is up to you, I guess, but Vince would be interviewed by XXL in 2014, and he was asked about not making that 2014 class. He said that if he was still in freshman contention in 2015, then he messed up. He would take up a spot in 2015, but by that time, he would have been in the game for five years since his appearance on EPAR, four years from his first project. But Vince still shined with his XXL freshman freestyle and cypher. Shortly before the list came out, Vince revealed his first single, Senorita, from his debut album, Summertime 06, in May of 2015. This is another hard song from Vince Staples. The double XL list came out at the beginning of June of 2015, but later on that month, Vince released his debut album, Summertime 06. This was a double album. Summertime 06 peaked at number 39 on the Billboard 200, selling 13,000 copies in its first week. The title of the album is significant because the summer of the album is when Vince turned 13 years old. It was a very important time in his life. He was young, trying to be grown like a lot of people at that age. When questioned about the album, Vince said, I wouldn't say it was a hard time, but it was a very important time. A debut album to me is sort of coming of age, and I had to look towards something I'd experienced that was in that same type of vein. That time period is where I draw my inspiration from. I feel like it's an important time in a man's life. It made me what I am today in a sense. I just wanted to share that with a listener who could be interested in where I came from and what I've been through. I felt like it was a perfect way to introduce myself to music on a larger scale. The month after the album dropped, Vince released a music video for one of his biggest songs of all time, North North. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. The song went viral a year later in October of 2016 when a woman took to the internet to go on an epic rant about hearing the song on the radio. This is the the main chorus says, I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. From the city where the skinny carries strong heat, Nerf side, Long Beach, Nerf side, Long Beach. So let's just encourage kids to run from the police because that's okay, right? We wonder why this society is so messed up. Listen to the music. Vince responded to the woman and said that the clip was not funny at all. It wasn't right to attack someone over their stance, their opinions, or their religion. He called it immature. A lot of people called the woman out for using the N-word in the video, but Vince said that the woman did not look racist. What I was saying was that the woman in that video is clearly confused on the context of the song, which causes her to be frightened. She also, in my opinion, seems to be emotionally unstable. With both those things being said, she has a right to her opinion. This misunderstanding of our community leads to miscommunication, which we should convert into a progressive dialogue. That's all I have to say about that. Stop asking me. As of 2023, the song North North is platinum and is Vince's only song that is platinum as of the time of this video. To me, Summertime 06 is one of Vince's best projects with songs like Dope Man, Senorita, Lift Me Up, Get Paid, etc. A song that I did not mention, which in my opinion is one of the best Vince Staples songs and one of my favorite songs ever is Like It Is. I gotta be, I gotta be, I gotta be the one to make it up to heaven despite the things I
I don't know why this song does not get talked about like that. It's one of the best songs that I've ever heard. The production is amazing, it has powerful lyrics, and it gets better with every listen. Definitely go listen to the full song if you have not heard it yet. You will not regret it, I promise. Now Vince had his first album under his belt, but he kept working, and in August of 2016, Vince released the Prima Donna EP. This was another great EP from Vince. My favorite song from it, hands down, has to be the song War Ready. My bitch look like Mona Lisa, hammers busting like a soda in the freezer. There is a 10 minute short film that came out alongside the project. After the release of Prima Donna, Vince started working on his next album, which ended up being Big Fish Theory. With this project, he was coming up with a completely different sound from what fans had heard in the past from him. In 2017, Zach Sakoff, I think that's how you say it, Zach Sakoff did an interview with Pigeons and Planes where he explained how Vince found his new sound. Zach did production on Big Fish Theory with him having a production credit on five of the 12 songs on the album. Zach and Vince met through a mutual friend who was Vince's DJ. This was years before they worked on the album together. Zach initially wanted to skip college and get into music, but Vince urged him to continue with school. Years later, around the making of the album, Zach was almost done with his studies at Yale University. While in college, Zach spent a semester abroad in London, which piqued his interest in UK garage music and progressive electronic production techniques. This had a huge impact on how the album Big Fish Theory sounded sonically. Vince told Zach to send him some beats, so Zach sent him beats that sounded similar to Summertime 06. This was not what Vince was looking for. At the time, Vince was listening to a lot of house and electronic music. He wanted his next album to be something different from what he had already done. In February of 2017, Vince released Bag Back, which was the first single for his sophomore album, Big Fish Theory. It's definitely one of my favorite songs from the album, but the next single, Big Fish, is another one and is one of Vince's biggest songs. So far from my past misfortune, no sleeping, late nights, no eating, gun squeezing, I'm a real artesian. This song finally went gold in 2022, and rightfully so, because this was another banger from Vince. With the release of the song, the date for his sophomore album was released. In June of 2017, Big Fish Theory was released and peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200, selling 24,000 copies in its first week. An 11,000 copy improvement from his debut album. Vince Staples was highly upset when this album did not get any love from the Grammys. He thought that the album should have won a Grammy Award for Electronic Album of the Year. My album is better than anything I'm seeing right now, and I'm very honest with that. I appreciate people's works, and I never want to put myself first, but my album is better than anything I'm reading right now. So I should win Electronic Album of the Year based on my production alone. But I can't be that because I'm rapping on it, which makes no sense because I'm better than everything right here. That year, the album 3D The Catalog by German electronic music band Kraftwerk won for Best Dance Electronic Album. I found some articles mentioning now deleted tweets from Vince saying that record sales could be a possible reason why he got snubbed due to the Grammy committee being less likely to lend their ears to his music. Vince also said that he deserved a nomination in nearly every category. For Vince, it was not necessarily about the award, but more so about having black artists recognized for their art outside of the established parameters of what a black artist can be. This is something that Tyler the Creator also touched on when he won a Grammy for Best Rap Album for Igor at the 62nd Grammy Awards in 2020. At the tail end of 2017, Vince was featured on the Billie Eilish song in Burn. Once again, Vince has a short but great verse. When discussing the song, Billie said that Vince Staples was her number one choice. When she was working on the song in the studio, she originally wanted to call it Watch and Burn. But this idea ended up producing two different versions, with the other version being her song Watch. 
in 2020, the song In Burn went gold. At the beginning of 2018, Vince hilariously made a GoFundMe titled Get the F Off My D. The goal was to raise $2 million for his early retirement. He said that people had to either get off of his D or fund his lifestyle. The page was not up for long and Vince hilariously voiced his displeasure on Twitter with a series of tweets and he let it be known that he was not going to stand for his GoFundMe being deleted. A woman by the name of Kelsey who seemingly worked for GoFundMe helped him get the page back. The campaign raised a total of over $2,000. Seeing that this did not even scratch the surface of the goal, Vince canceled the GoFundMe and refunded all the little people with big voices as he said. He also added that he was personally matching the donations made and donating the full amount to the Michelle Obama Library in North Long Beach. Not that long after this, Vince dropped a song called Get the F Off My D in March of 2018. In the song, Vince details the backlash that he received from critics, music journalists, his haters, etc. Vince has some dope music videos as well, but he felt like he was not getting recognition on both fronts. In the first verse, he raps that he missed his mark and that his label Dev Jam needed to switch how they marketed him. In the same verse, he rapped that rappers do anything to blow up, but guess who does the bending behind the scenes? He wasn't a slave to Dev Jam or the music industry. In 2018, we also saw the release of Vince's third studio album, FM. He dropped it on November of 2018 with very little warning. It peaked at number 37 on the Billboard 200. It's a very short project with a total runtime of just over 22 minutes. In an interview with Big Boy TV, Vince expressed that he does not like long projects and even took a few songs off of FM. Once you get the point across, Vince feels like there really isn't anything else that really needs to be said. What's the point of having an album over an hour long, but you got your point across 20 minutes in? One of the biggest songs from this album has to be fun. Hey, I'm so nerfy, my loves go viral for me right slow. In 2019, Vince did not release any projects, but he did release a few singles. One of these singles was So What alongside the first episode of the Vince Staples show. The song Sheet Music came from the second episode. As of now, there's only a trailer and two episodes on YouTube. I thought and still think that the episodes are hilarious and I knew that the show would be good. But time went by and there was no full show. This was until 2022 when it was announced that Vince Staples was getting a comedy show on Netflix. The show is set to also be titled The Vince Staples Show. It's supposed to be loosely inspired by Vince's life while being set in Long Beach, California. My belief is that what he put on YouTube years before this was going to be a completely different show. Since writing the script though, the trailer for Vince's Netflix show has dropped. It looks really good from what I've seen and I'm looking forward to February of this year when it's supposed to come out. Definitely go out and support it because y'all know how Netflix be doing with the cancellation of shows. In 2020, Vince also did not drop a project and he did not drop one single. Fans did not hear new music from Vince until 2021. This was the longest layoff that he had ever took. He had pretty much dropped a project a year since 2011, but with the release of his self-titled album in 2021, it had been three years since FM. His self-titled album was led by the song Law of Averages. The second single, Are You With That, released right before the album. This is the most popular song from the project. Visit my crypts that lay under the ground, running around. We was in kids that play. In July of 2021, Vince released his fourth album, Self-Titled. This was Vince's first album after leaving Dev Jam for Motown Records. It peaked at number 21 on the Billboard 200 charts. About the album, Vince said, it really gives much more information about me that wasn't out before. That's why I went with that title. I felt like I've been trying to tell the same story. As you go on in life, your point of views change. This is another take on myself that I might not have had before. Just like FM, it has a very short runtime of just over 22 minutes. It's actually a few seconds shorter than FM. 
Vince explained the reason for this during an interview with Apple Music. He said that during COVID in 2020, he blew his album budget. He's normally always home, but people were in his ear saying that he did not go to the studio enough. Because of this, he started to go to the studio every day and it got to the point where he blew his budget. Obviously going to the studio and recording costs money that is taken from your budget. Around this time, the producer, The Alchemist, hit him up to produce a project with him and Earl Sweatshirt. Alchemist said that he only needed three weeks of his time and Vince was down to do it. When Vince went to go work with Alchemist, everybody was in the studio getting high and this was during the pandemic, so Vince was skeptical of there being a lot of people in the studio. Vince ended up rapping on a lot of Alchemist beats and Earl only had a few verses done. Vince wanted to put the songs out, but he said that Alk was moving at a slow pace. Kenny Beats previously produced four Vince Staples on FM, and during this time period where the collab project was in limbo, he slid in and the two made over 40 songs together, but only 10 were chosen for his self-titled album. The Alchemist responded to what Vince said in an interview and said that what he said was not true. He took to Twitter to say that Vince was full of it and he had a finished six song EP with just Vince on it for over three months. It was already mixed, plus he had mad songs with him and Earl. Vince responded to what Alk said and clarified that Alchemist gets high and is productive instead of getting high and sleeping in the studio. Everything ended up being good between them though. Alchemist even tweeted out a link to Vince's self-titled album telling fans to run up the numbers so they could release some music. Unfortunately, in 2023, Vince's joint project with The Alchemist leaked online. Vince was not happy about this, replying to the leak with a tweet. Just a month after the leak, Alchemist replied to a fan on Twitter saying that the project was still to come out. As of the making of this video, it still has not released. In 2022, Vince dropped a song that I personally feel like should have been a hit. Everything about the song is a vibe, and out of all of the songs that he's ever done, I really feel like this is the one that should have been way bigger, and that song is Magic. Magic was the lead single for Vince's fifth album, Ramona Park Broke My Heart, which was released in April of 2022. The album ended up peaking at number 21 on the Billboard 200. Ramona Park is in Long Beach and Vince frequently mentions it in his music. The cover art for the album is a picture of his mother as a kid. In my opinion, I think that from top to bottom, this is Vince's best project to date. Songs like Free the Homies, Magic, When Sparks Fly, Slide in the Blues are amazing. The album was widely praised by both fans and critics. Ramona Park Broke My Heart was Vince's first project in four years that had a runtime of over 25 minutes. As of now, this is his last released album because he did not drop an album in 2023. He is working on new music though, with him taking the Instagram at the very beginning of this year, saying that new music was on the way in 2024. I know that some people feel like the word underrated gets tossed around a lot, and some people might even say that I toss around that word a lot, but I do firmly believe that Vince Staples is highly underrated. I feel like his work does not get talked about enough, and I initially never understood why he was not more popular. Now I understand that Vince could be way bigger if he took the route that most rappers do with his music, but he's always been different. No project from him sounds the same, and he's constantly evolving every time he drops. Avant-garde is the best way I can describe Vince because of that. He goes against the grain and is completely different from his contemporaries. You can tell that he genuinely cares about the music and performing his music. Big emphasis on performing because that's something that he takes immense pride in. Not only is Vince a great musician, but the man is talented in other areas of entertainment. From what I've seen, the dude is a solid actor, and I think the dude is genuinely hilarious. Watching his interviews and seeing his tweets are hilarious. His tweets about Meek Mill and Tiger Woods be cracking me up every time I see them. How can we forget his interview talking about how Ray J can never take an L and his Coachella interview going at R. Kelly? Straight classics, I just think Vince is effortlessly funny. 
I never really realized it until this video, but Vince is only 30 years old right now. To have done what he has already done and still have years left is quite impressive. Who knew that out of his whole double XL freshman class, he would be one of, if not the only person that's still out here making noise. In an interview with Rap Radar, Vince detailed his journey of being Earl Sweatshirt type man for two years and making sure that he got the shows on time. He was getting $500 a week per diem while a one bedroom place in Long Beach was almost $1,000 a month rent in the hood. He couldn't even afford that and he ended up opening for Mac Miller. Vince Staples shared a room with Mac Miller's security guard and performed when the doors opened for 15 minutes. After this, he toured with Schoolboy Q and he noticed his music was not translating to the audience. Schoolboy Q was the first person to really help Vince musically that was not his friend. Schoolboy Q gave him advice and said that his songs were way too slow. Vince took this advice and the trajectory of his career started to change. I honestly hope that more people wake up to Vince and his music and stop sleeping. He's one of the best of his generation and hopefully his next project can awaken a lot of people. All in all, let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.